Happy Septandi! I'm Ken. This is Canadian Retro Things. Welcome! Today, it is finally time to take a look at the Color Computer 3 that I picked up at Coco Fest. When I bought this computer at Coco Fest, I plugged it in and I tested it out, and it was not working properly. So I thought, well, that's a good project for me to fix this computer. And I've had it for a while, and I plugged it in and turned it on a couple of times, and the problems that it had seemed to have mostly corrected themselves. This leads me to believe that there might be some power issues with this computer. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to open it up. I am going to test out some voltages, uh, give a visual inspection of the capacitors and solder joints. And uh, then in some future videos, I am going to start upgrading it and future proofing it. But before I open up this computer and start messing around with it, I have to thank the sponsor of today's video, PCB Way. At PCBWay, you can get 10 boards for as little as $5. And right now, you can enter their 5th PCB Design Contest for your chance to win one of many prizes, such as First Prize, which is $1,500, a $200 coupon, and a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B 4GB. There's even a participation prize of a Raspberry Pi Pico. The project must be submitted between September 1st, 2022 and December 31st, 2022. See the PCB Way website for a full list of prizes and rules. The first thing I am going to look at is what were the problems that I had when I tested it out at Coco Fest. So I've currently got it hooked up through the RGB to the with the switcheroo. So it's running on HDMI here. And this is the exact setup that I used at Coco Fest. So turn it on. It did this at Coco Fest. Now the first problem was that the keyboard was giving me a garbled signal. But it's not doing that now. The other problem that it was having at Coco Fest was that it was not reading cartridges. Now, all I have here is my Coco SDC, so let's plug that in and try it out. And as you can see, it's reading it just fine. Now, from what I understand, if uh, you run into the problem of it not reading cartridges, generally the uh, 6809 has been damaged due to hot swapping the cartridges. Um, that basically means you're taking the cartridges in and out while the power is on. That's not something you can do with the Tandy computer. And it's playing music, playing sound anyway. And yeah, so the problems that it was having at Coco Fest don't seem to be happening now. So let's uh, open this up and take a look and see what's going on on the insides of this computer. The only thing I have to test out uh, the board right here is, of course, my multimeter. So it's just going to be testing some voltages. First thing I'm going to test is the cartridge port because um, that was one of the things that there was a problem with. So let's take our ground there and it should be pin 9. Now things are nicely labeled on this board for pin numbers. So pin 1 is the outside, pin 2 is the inside, then 3, 4, Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. 4.93 volts, which is just about perfect. 
And I believe it's pin 7 on the 6809. And it is pin 7. As I said, nicely uh, labeled. So that's pin 20, pin 10, 987. 4.93, exactly what the cartridge port is giving me. And now I'm going to test the chips around in here because those are the ones that are close to the keyboard connector. So make sure nothing's gone wrong. These two chips here, both pin 14, should be the power. Well, right, good. And good. Well, so far on the board, all the power things seem to be working just fine. I'm going to continue testing everything on here. Make sure that all, everything is within spec. All right, I have the backing off, and now comes the really fun part of a very close examination of all these solder joints. I am kind of looking. We might have some problems up in this area here. Let's see if I can bring that in a little closer. It does look like there's possibly been some rework done there, and it was not cleaned very well. I also noticed some areas right in here that look like they might be a problem source. And right over here might have a little bit of a problem. And these are all just things that I noticed on first glance. So let's see what's going to happen as I look closely at everything. I'll be back with my findings. So quickly going through this board, it definitely looks like there has been some rework done in a lot of areas on here. And I have discovered a few spots that look like there could be some bridged contacts. So I am first off going to try and get some of this residue off of here. And I also saw a few spots that uh, could be some uh, solder joints that are maybe not making the best of connections. Okay, now I'll take a look and see if uh, I can see where those uh, possible bridged solder joints are. I'll be right back. The areas on the board that I thought might have bridged contacts up in here, um, down here I thought I saw a couple of pins here that might be bridged. Once I cleaned the, them off with the IPA, those little sections seem to have washed away. So I think they were just flaked um, residue of uh, the solder, which entirely could have been bridging the contacts. I don't know for sure, but just applying the IPA and giving it a little clean has gotten rid of those. So if that was the problem, then uh, yeah, having the board properly cleaned the first time would have prevented it. Looking over the board, I found another spot where there is some of the corrosion -y crap stuff that uh, could be causing a bridge right between these two um, points right here. So if you look at it really really closely you can see that it does look like there's the possibility of bridging between those two spots. I guess it's entirely possible that when I was uh, testing it, some of these points might have been bridged. 
and just the movement of moving the computer around may have just knocked a bunch of enough of this uh, residue loose that not everything was bridging anymore. Hopefully that's what the problem was. So I found a few that they're not completely separated solder joints but they could be giving a few problems such as this one right here. So this one right here might be causing a problem and a few others on here. So I'm going to fire up my soldering iron and reflow the solder on these and we'll call that a day. All right, well, I'm going to continue looking for the spots that uh, look like they need reflowing, and then I will call it a day. I have the Color Computer 3 back together, and it's running. It's not that easy to try and fix a problem that doesn't consistently happen. I've had to go through this computer with a fine-tooth comb, and guess at the reasons that the glitches would have happened when I first tested this out. I've fixed a number of things that might have caused the problem, so only time will tell whether those problems repeat themselves. But I think I have this computer now at a point where I can start upgrading it. And I'm going to be going home from my cabin right away. When I get to my home, there are some parts waiting for me for this computer. So in the next uh, part of the video where I'm dealing with this computer, I will be upgrading and future-proofing it. And also, it's probably a good idea for me to change all the capacitors in this thing in case it did have a faulty electrical um, signal going into it. It may have caused some damage to the capacitors, I don't know. I'll test them when I pull them out. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what you can do with the liking, subscribing, and the commenting below because anything and everything you do is always greatly appreciated. Happy Septandi, and I will see you in the next video.